Hello YouTube, my name is Marie. Today we are going to talk about the 2020 K-dramas that I completed in 2020. So like my previous video, the 2020 K-dramas that I dropped in 2020, this video will be split into categories. I find the categories just so much easier to manage than just like big long lists. So the first category is the forgettable watches. And I thought about calling this category the 2020 K-dramas that I regret having completed but honestly if I've watched a show all the way through I don't regret watching it. At any point during the series there's a moment where I think I'm wasting my time. I just don't keep watching like I just drop it. That's why that dropped video is so big. Category two are a couple shows that I watched all the way through. Again I don't regret having finished them but they disappointed me. And then the last category will be ranking the um, remainder of the K-dramas that I finish in order of my favorites. And it's as simple as that, so let's get to it. Category number one, the forgettable watches. Only 2020 K-drama movie that I completed was Alive. I found the acting and the zombies in this show to be quite entertaining, but it didn't have the right kind of anxiety and claustrophobia that I wanted from this kind of movie which did make it forgettable in the end. Next I have Touch. Touch aired early January into February if I remember correctly. I thought the first three to four episodes of Touch to be by far the best. I think I actually like would have given the first two episodes in particular probably a five star. I just loved them but those first initial episodes were the best of the entire series and it just kind of like went downhill from there not plummeting to the bottom. Again I managed to watch the whole series but it went down to a really mediocre level a really forgettable level in the end. Next I have Kingdom Season 2. Kingdom Season 2 is everything I wanted from the second season of Kingdom. It was a true climax to the first season but that's kind of a double-edged sword because in my mind I view season 1 and 2 as a continuous story without a break in seasons. Like I just don't feel like season 1 and season 2 had like separate arcs like they really are a combined story that you should just binge back to back and because of that I kind of lump them together and then forget that season two even aired in 2020 if that makes any sense. So lastly in category one I have 18 again. You're a K-drama viewer who is not familiar with the original um, Zac Efron movie. 18 again will be a lot more memorable than it was for me. Personally this K-drama feels more like a nostalgic and almost comforting blanket. Like the feeling of being warm and wrapped in a Snuggie but you don't remember what the Snuggie looks like. <laughs> I think for me the only memorable part of the K-drama like retelling of the story is the male lead. He's definitely an actor I'm now interested in and will be looking out for his future works. For the plot and the story side of things, I don't think that there was anything new, fresh, or innovative. It was just Korea's take on Seventeen again, which I did enjoy. It's just, you know, forgettable. <laughs> now we're into category two, which are my disappointments. First one being Meow the Secret Boy. And oh my gosh, did this K-drama ever fizzle out for me. I'm actually really surprised at myself that I was even able to finish this considering I watched it week to week and if you know me I'm not very good at completing currently airing shows. But I did find the first half of Meow the Secret Boy to be incredibly charming almost fairy tale like like I felt like I was watching a children's book. I would say the later half um, I think it tries to be too realistic. It tries to maybe take itself a little bit too seriously and it loses sight of the charming fairy tale quality that it had in the beginning. Overall I really enjoyed the characters and the actors who portrayed them but the writing really disappointed me. Next, do you like Bromps? Again, I am happy that I did complete this one because I loved the characters, how the characters interacted, especially our leading couple. I found them so cute, but I'd say the 
last quarter of the show just lost me because I got so tired of all of the miscommunications, of all of the melodrama. Like I was just ready for the characters to have like a frank conversation about their feelings and just get on with it. <laughs> All right, moving into category three, I am going to be ranking the remaining seven K-dramas that I completed. As a little disclaimer, two shows for sure that I would put somewhere in like my top five if I had completed them would have been um, It's Okay Not To Be Okay and Tale of Nine Tailed. If you're wondering why I dropped them, go check out that other video. But coming in at number seven is Extracurricular Activities. This show is fantastic, and the production side is fantastic. The acting is fantastic. Everything about this show made really, really well. Um, I do have a full spoiler-ish review for it, so if you want more of my thoughts on extracurricular, you can go check that out. I give kind of some thoughts on the show from a criminological perspective, because I do have a criminology diploma. But since this is my list, and my own personal opinion is given the most weight, I did not actually enjoy the viewing of extracurricular activity all that much. <laughs> It was definitely not a show that got me very emotionally excited, and that is why it is number seven. Number six is My Hulu Love. This one I thought was a lot of fun. It did have a few problems with it, but overall, again, I just had fun watching it. But I don't have strong opinions on it one way or the other, and that's why it's coming in on the lower end of this list. Number five is The School Nurse Files, and part of me wanted to put this one a little higher on the list because it has such a strong personality and it makes such a strong impression, but if I'm being honest with myself, I didn't really enjoy all of my viewing of it. Like there were moments where I was really questioning like do I even like this show? But I couldn't take my eyes away. Very unique watch in that sense. Coming in at number four is A Piece of Your Mind. This one was actually a winner of a you pick and I'll watch and I'm so glad that you guys voted for it because it blew me away. I was surprised at how all of the quiet moments really drew me in, but then I was also pleasantly surprised by the intensity and the drama in the later part of the series. Okay, so my third favorite from 2020 is Startup. People on the internet have their issues with Startup. Like lots of people hate who she ends up with in the end and they uh, wish that there were more up like the business elements to it, but <laughs> That was not a problem for me. I didn't really have any gripes with the show at all Like I can't really think of a negative in my head. It was just thoroughly entertaining Like I just put it on and I was entertained the entire time <laughs> my second favorite watch from 2020 is flower of evil this had a great hero, it had a great villain, it had really smart writing, it had so many twists and turns, and I liked it more than Startup in the way that it wasn't just simple entertainment the entire time, it really captured me and drew me into the story. Lastly, my favorite K-drama from 2020 is Itaewon Class. There are very few K-dramas that get me this excited, both in just the watching of the K-drama and experiencing the story, but also in talking about it and sharing it. Like, I raved about it so much to my parents that it convinced them to put it on and then they watched it the whole way through as well. And I would go over to my parents' house once a week and we would watch the two episodes that had aired together and that is not something I ever get to do with K-dramas because nobody else is really interested in watching them with me. So not only did I absolutely love the story of E.T. Wan, class, like the acting, the underdog story, the just everything about it, like what it looked like, but I also loved, love, love the process of watching it. It is something that I shared with my parents. It meant a lot to me that I could share this element of my life being K-dramas with someone in real life. Like I love talking about K-dramas with you guys. But it just, it did mean a lot to me that like I could watch it with my parents and have fun doing that. 
So you guys, that's everything for me. I would love to hear yours down below, especially if you split them into categories like I did. Give me one of each, or if you remember more, tell me all of the ones that you remember. Have a good day and a good night. Bye.